Ebony, you're so consistent. We all need to take a page out of Ebony's book. Can y'all hear my music? Because, you know, I don't know if y'all can hear the ratch. <laughs> I am well. Today's, today's conversation. Okay. Today's conversation is going to be a little lit. So if you're not feeling lit, I suggest you get off right now. <laughs> If you're not feeling lit, I suggest you get on off right now, because we are talking about political pussy today, <laughs> and I am just approving all of the members who have been waiting to get into the group to hear this conversation. I sent out an email this week about the pussy, and all of a sudden, a surge of people just requested to be added to the group, so... I am just letting everyone in so that we are all accounted for before I get started. So thank you so much for joining me. First of all, I'm your host, Jamila Offset, the one and only, the goddess queen, the growth goddess, representing Decatur by way of Trinidad and Tobago, hailing from Atlanta, Georgia, okay? The almighty, the omnipotent, the one and only, Jamila! <laughs> so welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm so glad to see you. I'm, I'm always happy to interact with you, to be with you. And today's topic is very juicy. We're talking about political pussy. And uh, um, we got a guest today. Can we just start off with our guest? Can, can we start off with our guest, you know, for today? Because it's fucking Friday. Um... Thank you, thank you. Guest, let's see, guest. <laughs> How do I get you on, guest? What do I need to do? Help me out now, I need to get, get my guest on. Go out and come back in, guest, so we can get you on camera. While the guest is getting their stuff together and while we're figuring it out, I wanted to start talking to you and, and just really giving you what you can expect for today, right? So you're really gonna enjoy today's discussion, today's lesson, because today's lesson is all about the power and the politics of the pussy, right? And even saying that word, there are so many people who get so intimidated with that word, right? The, the pussy, you know, they get intimidated. They say, oh my God, that's the P word. We can't say that, cover the children's ears. But meanwhile, while we are um, afraid to use that word, afraid to talk about pussy, our pussy is all over the world. Our, our pussy is all over the internet. We're going to talk about Jada Pinkett Smith. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about her having to come forward and sit at the table with her husband and address the things that, the rumors that took place, the things that she's done, right? We're going to talk about the white lady at the protest who walked through the protest butt ass booty ass naked right you saw the video y'all y'all saw the video she walked through the protest naked and what happened what happened when she did that the police went home right so we're gonna talk about these things um dang dang guess come on now we're gonna talk about these things but we're also gonna talk about the pussy Okay, we're, we're also going to talk about the pussy. We're also going to talk about um, why, why, why is this such a big deal? Why, why people make such a big deal out of it, right? So what I wanted to do was I wanted to start you off by talking, talking to my guests, but I'm trying to figure out exactly how I can get my guests on the thing. Like, guests, do you have a camera? Allow viewers, add viewers to be in your broadcast. Let me see. It says I can add a mirror to be in my broadcast. It doesn't say I can add my guest. So I'm going to wait, guest. Let's, let's, let's try it. Let's, let me see what I can do. All right. Whatever. You know? All right. So let's start out with talking about um, the politization, politicization of the pussy. First of all, Ebony already started us... <laughs> Ebony already started us off by talking about her discomfort with that word, right? And, 
you know, I'm curious, how many are, of you are comfortable with the word pussy? When you talk about, you know, your sex, when you talk about your body part, what word do you use? Do you use pussy? Do you use vagina? What, 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 word, what word do you use? Let's start there. What word do you use to describe your, your sexual organ? Let me get a little close though, so we can talk, girl, talk. Um, because whatever word you have used, I want you to know that any word is okay. Whatever you're referring to, whatever word you're using to refer to your sex is completely okay. But what we are <laughs> good, what we are gonna talk about first, and what I'm what I want to talk to you about first, um, is the history of the word pussy, right? Uh, seeing so far, Monet says she uses pussy. Amira says she uses vagina. Ebony, I usually say vagina. <laughs> Yoni, <laughs> and Tina uses pussy, vagina, twat, cooch, twang, portal. Perfect. Those are all perfect, 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 perfect. Y'all already ahead of the game. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Right. So um, there are so many names to call this this portal. I love that, Tina. I love to, I love portals. So there's so many names that we call this particular portal. But I want to start with talking about the um, the fear, the fear, the history, the history of the fear of women's bodies. Okay, so when we look back at history, when you look back at history, when you do research about history, I want you to think about the beginnings. What was the association? What was the symbolism? What, what was the meaning? How did pussy show up and represent itself in history? And when we go back and we look at history, when we really sit there and we look at history, we see that at the beginning of our political system, at the beginning of enforcement, we see that there were crusades, right? There were crusades led by religious institutions against sex, okay, against sex sex. What do I mean when I say that? That means that when we look at history, we see that at the beginning of our history, religion came in and said, no sex, guys. No sex. We're not doing this. We're not, we're not fucking. You're not gonna fuck. You're not gonna have sex. They made sex a sin at the beginning of, of, of our history. They made sex a sin. Not only did they make sex a sin, but they also made some portions of being an intuitive woman a sin as well, right? So it wasn't just sex. It wasn't just the attack against sex. It was also the attack against women who lived sexually free lifestyles. It was attacks and the burnings of goddess synagogues. Let's get into it. We here. It's Friday. Let's get into it, right? If I'm going to talk, I have to speak freely. And if we look at our history, you all, I try not, I try, when I teach, I try to stay in alignment with, you know, I try to stay on topic with what we're talking about and I try not to go too deep because sometimes you don't be ready for the, for the deepness. You don't, sometimes you, you got to strap your seatbelt in, you got to click, click that motherfucker before you, you, you really are prepared for the deepness. But when we go back and we look at the pussy, we realize that the pussy was a threat to the church from day one. From square one, day one, letter A, the pussy was a threat to the church, okay? They ain't like that. They ain't like that. They like pussy. Intuitive women burned them. They literally said burn them, right? The, the church literally said burn them. And what do we see at the beginning of our beloved history? All across the world, we see women burned at the stake for being witches. We see women. Women burned at the stake. For being witches. Now let's talk about witch. Let's talk about witch. If we're going to talk about it, we got to talk about it. Let's talk about witch. What does it mean to be a witch? What does it mean to be a witch? Like all of us have learned about witches because we've all seen the hat. We've seen the pointy hat. We've seen the nose with the bump in it. We've seen the, 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 the stick, the broom that they ride around with. We've seen the cats. We've seen the owl. We've seen all this stuff. But what is it? what does it mean to be a witch? Right? To be a witch... According to the church, according to the, 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 holy, the holy government, because government, church, and state were combined from in the beginning. Church and state were one. And to be a witch 
is essentially someone who is in tune with their body, who's liberated, who uses the power of the pussy appropriately, someone who is connected to earth. Someone who's connected to earth. Someone who is not reliant upon the structures and the systems of government or church or church and state to make their decisions, but someone who is being led internally, being led by their heart, being led by their spirit, being led by their intuition. That's what the fuck a witch is. That's what a witch is. Those women who were connected to the earth, those women who used herbs for healing, those women who knew the power of their bodies. As a, a, as a woman, you are an a entire catalyst for spirituality. Your body, your whole entire body is a catalyst. Women have intuition. Women, our spirit, our spirit, our intuition tells us everything that we need to know to make educated, thorough decisions. And the church saw that as a threat. There were, there were very many times that, and I'm, I'm listening to a book right now, it's talking about women's wisdom. And there were very many times, you know, this, this is a book, Women's Wisdom from the Heart of Africa. And so the, the person who is teaching about women's wisdom from the heart of Africa, she talks to, to us about our womb space, right? What we, what we know is our womb space. We know that this space right here, all up in here, this is the womb space, right? And she encourages you when you're confused about a decision, when you don't know which way to turn, when you, when you, when you need additional guidance, she encourages you to put your hand here, but also to put your hand on the pussy and ask the pussy, what's up? And ha actually having that conversation with, with, with the portal. Tina, I love that word portal. Having a conversation with the portal to figure out what it is that you need to do. See, this, this conversation, it makes so many women uncomfortable. Ugh, it's us. It's us. This is, this is, this is us. This is us. This is, uh, this is you. Talking about your pussy shouldn't make you uncomfortable. So the question is, if it does, the question is, why? 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 Who did that to you? Who did that? Who made you feel like it was uncomfortable to talk about your own body? To talk openly about the pussy. Who made that? Who made who made that uncomfortable? Where does that come from? You gotta start asking these questions. I mean, it's 2020. We live in the in the this is the year of clear vision. This is the year that everything that you've been confused about is being made clear. Stop pretending like you can unsee what you're already seeing. You're learning it, you're experiencing it, you're knowing it. Stop pretending like you can unknow it. Who made you uncomfortable about the word pussy? Who made you uncomfortable with it? Why? It's a part of your body. Think, and think about it like this. As grown women, you a grown woman, I'm a grown woman. If you're uncomfortable, think about our girls. Think about our teenagers. Think about all the rest of the females walking around with pussies. Uncomfortable. Why? Generations and generations and generations and generations of women uncomfortable about talking about a situation. Talking about our pussy when our pussy's in the news, bruh. Your pussy's in the news. All of our pussy's in the news. Abortion laws. Why, why, why are people in the room telling you that you can or cannot have abortion? Whether you are pro-life, pro-choice, or pro-whatever the fuck. It is not any man's decision to tell you what to do with your body. This is your body. They don't own your body, sis. They don't own your motherfucking body. Nobody owns your body but you. Your pussy is yours. All of it. It's yours. It's yours. The power of the pussy. And, and that's where the disconnect really is. The disconnect really comes from you not understanding the power of your own portal. This is yours. What is the power of it? What, it, it? It's almost like it's almost like having a superpower and not knowing how to wield it, right? Like having an actual, literal superpower and not knowing how to slay your superpower, right? Um, so this is what I want to ask you. Who taught you? We talking candidly. Who taught you about your pussy? Who, who taught you how to care for your pussy? How to how to acknowledge it, how to be in that space, that energetic space of, of the pussy. 
and 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 we're being honest here you know i don't, I don't show up to to give no half-ass truth i don't show up to do anything half-ass so if i'm gonna answer that question first and i'll leave the way i don't have no problem with that but if i'm gonna answer that question first i'll say that i honestly started to learn about the power of my own pussy last year last year last year last year was really the first year that i had traversed out of sexual trauma and really released all of that trauma from sexuality and let's see if i can get that request and i actually started to learn about the power of the pussy okay so i okay let me see Woo! okay so our special guest <laughs> we got a guest today we got a guest today hey. okay so the question for you is who taught you about the pussy who taught you about the power of your pussy and amira says no one did all <laughs> Our special guest, Monet. Boy, we're going to hear about her story. We're going to hear about how she learned about the pussy. Let's see. And let's give her some time. Y'all give her some time. She's going to talk about her pussy. She's going to talk about her journey. about this word the word pussy it's a pussy they've made the pussy political women have been do you understand the process of history women being burned at the stake for exercising the power of the pussy exercising intuition exercising all those things that make us the divine beings that we are the magical beings that we are peace amina do you understand that we didn't make we didn't make ourselves a threat. We were we were already a threat. Patriarchy, everything that the church stands for, everything that the government stands for, just a woman being a woman, knowing who the fuck she is, that's a threat. <laughs> that was a threat. That was a whole real life threat. So, you know, we talked a little bit about the history of it. And if you're confused about it, if you're like Jamila, that can't possibly be true. You know, what, you're talking about women being killed for just being, you know, wise and using the power. Look it up. Look up the Salem witch trials. Look up burning witches. Look it up. So you can see that there were hundreds of thousands of women burned, burned, burned. I'll be talking about your, the herstory. I'll be talking about the rest of the picture on another live. But I want you to know, just as a foundation, that at the beginning of time, the first temples, the first synagogues, the first any kind of, any type of holding space where people gave honor to God, the first of those were actually altars and temples created to honor the goddess, goddess temples, goddess, goddess altars, goddess, goddess, it was the goddess, okay? It was the goddess who was being honored. It wasn't this this man, this trinity, Christianity coming thousands of years later after this, but this trinity of man, man, and man. Because we know the Holy Ghost is supposed to be a man too, right? It's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All these are men. Where's the women? Where's the women? Where, 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 where? Okay? So we're going to talk about that on another live because, you know, that conversation actually makes, it makes my stomach hurt. It makes my womb hurt. I feel a, a heavy sense of grief when I think about how many lives, how many women's lives, innocent women's lives lost, magical women's lives lost. And when you look at our current state of affairs, the current state of affairs, the reason why shit's so fucked up is because we're lacking that femininity. There's an imbalance. There's an imbalance. There's an imbalance. If you don't, I don't know if you're noticing, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just me. 
But there's an imbalance taking place. When you only have one side showing up and representing, it's only masculine, 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 and the feminine is down here. And I'm not talking about masculine in terms of men, 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 men. Women! Women have only learned how to tap in and to be into that masculine energy. We're just now learning how to be in the feminine energy. Just now learning. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm trying to bring it down. I'm trying to not be so dramatic. I'm trying to just be normal. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. But women are just now learning how to embody. You're just now learning about the principles of the divine feminine. You are just learning about the principles of the divine feminine. What does that mean? That means that for years, you were operating in the vibration and in, in, in the energy of masculinity. It's all we've been taught. It's all we've been taught. Even the things that you think are feminine were taught to you by men. <laughs> Even the things that you think are feminine, the things that you think, the things that you're like, well, you know, in order to be feminine, I need to be soft or I need to be, you know, um, submissive. You know, I, you know this, these are the things that I need to be. Those things were taught to you by men. Men taught you what femininity is, men. Because men have been the ones leading the conversation. They've been the ones creating all the books, creating all the, the government, the, the, the church, everything. Imagine whatever your culture is. If you black, if you white, you know, if you are Persian, whatever you are. Imagine if the people teaching you how to be that culture were of an opposite culture. So if you're white, imagine black people were teaching you how to be white. If you're black, imagine white people are teaching you how to be black. If, if, you're, if you're, you know, uh, Chinese, imagine someone who's from Taiwan teaching you how to be Chinese. Like, we've been taught how, you've been taught how to be a woman by men. Men teach femininity. Men have given the definition of femininity. Men, men, men created it. They, that's what they did. That's what they did. So we're just now, you're just now learning for the first time the principles of the divine feminine. Because I, we have to put that word when you like, this bitch keep talking about divine feminine. Goddess, what is divine feminine? I want you to know that we're putting the word divine in front of feminine because that's the only word qualified to sit in front of the feminine, first of all. Your femininity, whether you know it or not, whether you embrace it or not, your femininity is divine. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Your femininity is a gift. When I talk about your power, your femininity is your power. Okay? I want you to think about what we talked about and what I talked about last week with healing your, your lineage, your the woman's lineage. The woman's lineage is not going to be healed through anything. You. Your lineage is not going to be healed by anything you've ever learned from the church or from men or from the patriarch. From, you're not, how? 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 How can the same people who taught you to destroy your femininity teach you how to heal it? How? Drop it in the comments. If I'm missing something, if I'm missing something, drop it in the comments. Because we, we women. We full of opinions. You full of, you got an opinion. How can the same people who told you, who taught you, who've trained your mind, who've brainwashed you into thinking that femininity means this? then turn around and teach you how to heal. How? How? Some of you are dealing with, you're dealing with some of the same generational woes that your grandma already dealt with. Your grandma already been through it. And you're dealing with the same shit that your grandma, it's a, it's a cycle. It's a cycle running through the women's side of your family. And you're dealing with it. But how are you dealing with it? How are you healing it? Because the divine feminine is healing this is healing. Your pussy is healing. Can we talk about it? I mean, I, I, I just, I be trying not to go on these rants. I really do. I be trying to, I be, try, I be like, first of all, they don't, they not ready. <laughs> they not ready. <laughs> but can we talk about sex? There's a reason that there's a whole terminology titled sex magic. What the fuck? Sex magic. At the Goddess Conference this year, I am teaching you about alchemy. I need you to know about alchemy. You need to know about alchemy. What is alchemy? Alchemy is the process of using energy that you're already circulating to 
to just recreate and regenerate. All them little self-help books that you done read, you know, uh, how to be more organized, how to have more habits, how to accomplish your goals. Who's writing those books? Are women writing those books? No, we're not. <laughs> we're not. Because we know that you don't got to habits and work yourself to death as a woman, as a feminine, as an, as an extension of the divine feminine. You do not have to work yourself to death to bring anything that you want into your life. We are women. We receive. It's on, it's on the podcast. Have you been listening to Rise of the Divine Feminine podcast? It's on the podcast. Receiving is our natural state. Allowing is our natural state. Being is our natural state. That is the, that is the natural state of the divine feminine. That's the natural state. So when we talk about things like the pussy, when we talk about things like sex magic, we're talking about all the things that you have access to. This is all your power. This is all, this is all part of the, you know, we all get superpowers. We all get gifts. We all get gifts. We all get to come in and we get gifts and, you know, we have a good time with our gifts. Some of us use our gifts in our career. We may be, you know, for me, I, one of my gifts, I'm, a, I'm an orator. I'm a speaker. When I speak, I'm not even speaking to you. Know that. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to your soul. I'm speaking to your spirit. I'm speaking to the divinity within you. That's who I'm speaking to. Okay? So we all have gifts. Some of us are caregivers. Some of us, you know, are artists and creatives. We all have gifts. But part of your power is within your womb. Part of your power is within your pussy. Which is why the pussy is in politics. Let's Don't guess where are you? <laughs> Let's talk about Jada. Okay, let me try to add my guest back on camera. Let me add my guest back. On camera. <laughs> Y'all know Jada was under attack this past week, right? With that whole August thing, but it highlights it's highlighting so much. Jada Pink is the <laughs> What is up with you? I don't know. I think it's my wife. You can't even hear it. with her business and I've coached her so we have a very long-standing relationship she's also helped with a few projects and what I absolutely love about Monet is her development and her maturation in terms of really developing a relationship with her pussy now I hate to be talking about somebody else's pussy like this right but um particularly because of the fact that she teaches you know and she has um, just led different things within you know, the work that we do in terms of reclaiming, you know, reclaiming that energy, you know, releasing the shame, releasing a lot of the things that you've been brainwashed to believe about your pussy. Let's talk about Jada Pinkett Smith. Can we talk about it? So this past week, you know, for those of you who know nothing, I'm going to speak to you like you know nothing. For this past week, we saw, um, or the past couple of weeks, we a young man came out. Um, Jada Pinkett is an actress married to uh, Will Smith, and in the past couple of weeks, um, a young man came out and said that they had this sexual relationship, you know, that they were friends and that it led to more and that her husband gave a blessing for them to engage in a sexual relationship. And, um, you know, from that, 
there was just so much uproar. There was so much, you know, she's this and she's that. And, you know, a lot of accusations being thrown, just a lot of, a lot of energy, a lot of energy being dedicated to Jada Pinkett. Now, Jada Pinkett has been in the celebrity scene for 20 years. You know, she has um, acted in movies. She has uh, children who've also acted in movies. Of course, her husband is an Academy Award winning, winning actor and etc. And she's also the leader and the mastermind behind the Red Table Talk, which is really a, a, a table discussion where various issues are presented to her, her mother and her daughter. And then they just talk about those things openly. So, you know, when all of this, this, um, this fanfare was was aroused there was all of these conversations around her being promiscuous her being a hoe her being labeled in many 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 different ways and what ended up happening was her and her husband decided to sit down and do a red table talk on what took place and I don't want to go off subject and talk about my opinions about their red table talk you know generally speaking i want to stick to understanding the power of the pussy i want to stick to that um but in that particular red table talk you know she talks about how when her and august first started their friendship he was in a very precarious situation and she was just trying to help and that's what she said you know i just wanted to help him and etc cetera, etc cetera. and you know, even that classification of wanting to help and then the subsequent relationship that took place, which was, you know, them having the sexual relationship. I'm curious, what were your takeaways with that? When you saw or heard this woman saying, I just want to help. And then there turns around and there's a sexual relationship that takes place after that what are you what are you perceiving from that what are you taking away from that right because if i'm going to be you know frank about one of the things that we're missing is the power that we hold within our bodies to be able to heal okay to be able to heal I want you to think about women and men and the dynamic of women and men. Let, let's just let's let's just think about the dynamic of women and men. Um, women as receivers, but as also as alchemizers, also as manifestors, also as nurturers, right? I want you to think about that. The femininity, the space of the divine feminine, feminine, and that space of healing, of compassion of knowing, of presence, right? All of those things are things that we're bringing to the table whether we realize it or not. Okay, and Ebony is saying sex is healing for some. Absolutely, for many. I want you to, I want you to go back to what we talked about at the beginning with the church. The church, church and state were combined and the first thing that they did was say what? No more sex, sex is a sin and burn the women. Sex is a sin, okay. Sex is a sin and burn the women. That's the first thing that the church did. That's the first thing that the church said. I'm not making this up. You can go look it up. <laughs> you can go look it up. If any part of this is making you uncomfortable, ask yourself why. Why? Why am I uncomfortable hearing this? Why am I, why am I so uncomfortable with this? What, what about this is triggering me? What about this is, is, is making things you know, difficult for me to receive? What about this, what, 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 what is my problem? Ask yourself, what is my problem when, when she talks about pussy, when she talks about the church, when she talks about religion, when she talks about women being burned, hundreds of thousands of women being burned, what is, what, why am I so uncomfortable with this? Ask yourself, why am I uncomfortable with these types of conversations? And, and furthermore, where are these conversations? Where are they? Where are they taking place? Can you point me to a Facebook group? where these conversations are taking place, I'm, I'm open to it. Point me to a, a, a place, point me to a, a common stomping ground where there are any number of women teaching women about the power of true divine femininity, 
I mean, you're in a holy, a holy land right now. This is a holy land because I, I don't see it in the internet space. If I saw it in the internet space, it wouldn't be necessary for me to jump on Friday lives and talk about this, right? Where else have you found women or do you find women who are openly teaching other women about your power? A woman teaching you how to access your innate divine feminine power. Where? I'll wait. Because the truth of the matter is that what happened with Jada should have never been up for public discussion in the first place. Why is her pussy in the news media? Why? Why? At, you gotta you gotta ask questions. When you see this stuff, you gotta be like, if Will ever did anything, we would we don't know about it. So why is her pussy? Why is her husband on on at the table asking her about her affair for everyone, for everyone to be involved in her pussy? For everyone to be involved? Why did she feel the need to even come out and say what what she what she said? Why? Why? Why are we being put on the stand? Why is our pussy on the stand? Why is our pussy in the courtroom on the stand? Why? Why? I mean, we are in the shadow of the Me Too movement. We are in the shadow of the first time in our in our beloved archives where we get to see women coming out in droves saying this is what the fuck happened to me. Okay? This is what happened to me. That's a monumental place to be. That's a monumental place to be because for the most part, most of your government thinks that it's their responsibility to monitor your pussy. And then when someone violates your pussy, they say, we don't know. We can't verify whether or not that was true. We don't know. We can't help you. It's an accusation. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. So with Jada, why is Jada's husband dragging her before the population? I want you to think about the Scarlet Letter. Do you know? Do you know the Scarlet Letter? Do you know the book? Do you know the movie? Demi Moore was in the movie. It was a great movie. But do you know the book? Do you, do you know the Scarlet Letter? Do you know the Scarlet Letter? Do you know the story of the woman who was dragged, who supposedly had an affair with a man? You know, she's married and she had this affair and then she falls in love and she gets pregnant. And, you know, when they realize this is a pregnant woman and, and she's, you know, she's, she's pregnant and shame on her. And they, they put a scarlet letter on her fucking back. <laughs> they put a letter on her back so she could walk around the whole damn village with a letter on her back saying, I'm a, I'm a slut, I'm a ho, sex, and I'm pregnant. She's walking around pregnant with a scarlet letter. Do you know that that story represents society that story represents the church and the state that that story is representative of what women have had to go through being outed being being labeled being shamed about their pussy when men what is virginity <laughs> what is the what is virginity what is virginity what is virginity right I mean, do men get any kind of accolades for being virgins? Like, what is this? What, what is this? What is going on here? What is this? What is this stuff? These are all things that were created to bamboozle you. These were things created to bamboozle you and to confuse you. These, these were labels created to confuse you. These were labels created to confuse you, to make you think that for you being a liberated woman, fully in touch with her body, that's a threat. That's a threat. Don't like that. We bring you in front of the people and we tell everybody that you are a whore. You are a whore. You sleep with people. Men don't get brought in front of people and call hoes. Hoes? A hoe? What is a hoe? What is a hoe? Someone who sleeps? has sex that's whores why church and state why why women hundreds of thousands of women burned say nothing to me say nothing so jada pinkett is is brought to the table by her husband by her husband 
he brings her to the table. He, he imagine if we were living in, in the 1600s, he would be the one dragging her out, dragging her out. Y'all know I'm dramatic. So I gotta come here, Jada, dragging her out, throwing her in front of the crowd. Explain to these people what you did. Tell them what you did. Tell them, Jada, how you sleep with the man. What happened, Jada? What happened? Why are you doing that, husband? Protect black women. Protect women and protect black women. Protect black women. Why are you doing that, husband? Why are you dragging me to a table and asking me to explain myself to a motherfucker who, who I don't... Who, are they paying my bills, Will? Are, 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 am I sleeping with them at night? What do I owe? Why, why do we owe explanation about our pussy, about our bodies? Why do we owe anyone any explanation? Why? Why? The power of the pussy, it's such a threat. That week alone, with that interview, there were so many men writing these posts about Jada being a hoe. She's a hoe. She's sleeping with this and she's sleeping with that. Why is her pussy such a threat to you? Why is, why, why, this is what I want to ask you. And I'm here for legitimate answers. Why is a woman sleeping with multiple men a threat to anyone? Go. I'm ready for it. Tell me. I'd like to be enlightened. Why is that a threat? Who is it a threat to? And then why? A woman who decides to have 30 sexual partners night after night. Why is it, a, who is it a threat to? And why is it a threat? Okay, so Lilia says to her husband, I suppose. But we're talking about other women. Let's talk about women with no husbands who are called hoes. We've all heard, you've heard someone being called a hoe before. You've heard it. You've heard someone. You, oh, she was called a slut. She was called a hoe. What does that mean? And why? W why is who she's sleeping with relevant to anyone? Is who, the, is who these men are sleeping with relevant to anyone? Because I don't remember, you know, everything, but I remember in the Scarlet Letter when the woman who got pregnant had to walk around with the Scarlet Letter, no one called the man. No one said, hey, where's this baby daddy? Let's bring him out. Let's stone him. No one did that. He wasn't stoned. He wasn't chastised. He wasn't a threat. It wasn't a threat. It wasn't a threat. Okay. Monet says, it's a threat to lower vibrational men and women who aren't in tune with themselves. Women who aren't liberated are threatened by women who are. What a word. Y'all might need to screenshot that. <laughs> a word. Okay. A threat. A threat. A threat. A threat. It's a, the mirror says, I think it's a threat to men. Maybe it comes from their insecurities and the desire to control Come on, Amir. You better preach on this Good Friday. Crystal said it's a threat to no one and people need to mind a damn business. I'm just going to put the damn up in there. It's, it's a threat to these, these men who have been trained to believe that it is their right to access some parts of you. That you, you your body. I, I, I did a live. I don't know how long ago. I did a whole thing. I don't know how long ago. About men speaking to you and feeling as though they have the right to speak to you and you have to respond. That ain't my, what? There are women, I've heard stories about women who respond with their phone numbers, who respond by saying hi, just to feel safe. You know, when a man is approaching them, I've heard stories about women who respond to the men you know, who will say hello or give their phone number and try to, you know, um, interact with them in a certain way just to feel safe so that they don't feel like that person may get mad and harm them. I mean, imagine that. Are we, are we really, are we really, is it, are we, are we really here? Are we really here? Think about life from that perspective. Think about the fear that's already embedded in a woman to where she is trying to appease a man just to protect her own life. 
trying to appease a stranger just to protect our own life? Think about that. Why are we here in civilization, in society, in the 21st century? What has happened? What's happened? What's happened to you? What's happened to me? What's happened to us as women? What has happened? What has happened? What's happened? I try, I, I just, you know, Jada Pinkett, this situation, it, it brought a lot of conversation out and it outed a lot of people. It showed us who, who was for us and who has been brainwashed, who has been blindsided, who has been programmed to believe that this patriarchal shit that we've been exposed to is our natural state. Your natural state is being in the vibration of the power of your pussy. That's your natural state, sis. That's your natural state. If we go back, I want you to imagine yourself at the beginning of time. Imagine yourself in, in your most indigenous time, right? Imagine yourself in, in your most indigenous time. Imagine that you are transported back to the community that embodies your culture, the community that embodies, you know, your lineage, the, the, your original self, right? And I want you to ask yourself, okay, plane, okay, helicopter. <laughs> and I want you to ask yourself, what principles and rituals and beliefs did I hold in the beginning that I no longer hold anymore because of what I've been taught. I want you to ask yourself, what did I rely on? What did I use? What did I use to power me through to the next level? What, what, what tools did I have at the beginning as a woman? What tools do we have as women from our origins? I want you to think about the origin from the very beginning. What tools did you have from the beginning that you no longer have access to, awareness of, or are using? What tools? And I want to remind you that your sacred and most powerful tool is everything embedded within your divine feminine nature. From your womb space, we're going we gonna to keep doing this. So if you don't like it, go ahead and leave. From the womb space, right here because our, our wombs are innate to us as women men don't have wombs right um even though you know i accept my trans sisters they don't have wombs okay so when we talk about divine femininity divine femininity in that healing space we're talking about womb and we're talking about pussy these two things the portal of the pussy the power of the pussy the intimidation so while we're on a roll, let's talk about this white woman. <laughs> we ain't got that much time, but I got to slide this in. And at the end of the day, if you are watching it and you're like, okay, Jamila, you're right. I ain't been using my tools, <laughs> resources, power of the pussy. What are you talking about? Then that means that you know you need to be at the Goddess Conference. Since you know you need to go ahead and get your ticket today to the Goddess Conference. Because we're covering so many different topics i mean even just the topic of pleasure and embodiment do you know about embodiment do you know about pleasure do you know about that do, do, what do you know what do you know about this pleasure <laughs> what do you know right because who's teaching you who it's not your fault i'm not i, I don't think i'm blame, i'm not blaming you it's not your fault it is not your fault most of our mamas, grandmamas, great grandmas didn't know this type of stuff. They didn't know. Your mama didn't know. Your great grandma didn't. She didn't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even if your great grandma knew, she learned about it so late, she couldn't teach you. Right? She couldn't teach you. So she's in the afterlife and she's like, Jamila, go teach her. And I'm like, don't worry about it. I got her. Come on, bring, come on in. Come on in. I got you. Okay? But our, 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 our mothers, our mothers didn't know. Your mother didn't know. Your, your grandmother didn't know. The person who may know the most is that that one auntie who ain't got no kids. <laughs> you know the one who don't really fraternize with the family too much. <laughs> you know, she just be living her life and doing her old thing. That auntie, she knows something, okay? She knows something. She may not even know what she know. But if you, if you don't know, now you know. It's time to learn. 
It's time to learn. It's time for you to learn. Your time is now. If it wasn't now, you wouldn't be here. You don't believe in coincidences. I don't damn believe in coincidences. So the reason that you're here is to learn. Okay? So let's go ahead and learn what you need. You got to learn what you need to learn so that you can go ahead and apply this and you can do what you need to do. I don't know what you're trying to do. I don't know what your goals are. It could be... Tell me what you want to do. When you learn the power of the pussy, and you can start the sentence that way just to have a prompt. When you learn the power of the pussy... And when you learn the principles of divine femininity, what are you going to do with that energy? <laughs> Ebony says I'm not. <laughs> I love it. What are you going to do with that power? Once you are able, I want you to think about it like a super heroine, not a superhero, super heroine. So I want you to think about Wonder Woman. You know, she has these powers, these innate powers, and she uses her power to do this and to do that, right? When you learn the power of your pussy, what will you do with it what are you what are you what are you doing because you know who you are to an extent you may not know all the things that you are but you know that you are rising you know that you are growing that you are learning that you are transforming in 2020 already you've learned so much about yourself just in 2020 alone just in the last 90 days the last six months you have learned a whole hell of a lot about yourself okay and yet and still there's so much more for you to learn about you right so your pussy for where are you going to use you know the the principles of divine feminine for because you can use it two ways you could use it for good you know or you could just use it you know to put it in the closet not really but <laughs> i was gonna say evil but you can use it for things that aren't really affecting anybody but you you know, things that are just, you know, I'm going to do this for me, right? So, I'm curious about that. Drop your answer, because I really want to know what you're going to use this for. If I'm going to teach you, I'm going to give you the keys to the city. <laughs> if I'm going to teach you, I want to know what you're going to use it for. Okay, Monet says to heal her lineage and community. Tell me, Monet, what, what is in need of healing with your community? What is the first thing that, that you think of that's in need of healing for your community? Okay? And while she's talking about this, I want to talk about the American community and this goddamn Black Lives Matter protest. Y'all saw the video? Did you, see, did you see the video with the lady walking through butt naked? They've been calling her Naked Athena. I love that they're using this goddess attachment. <laughs> Naked Athena. <laughs> okay. So, and Amira says, I'm going to use it to heal and to help others heal. Beautiful. Beautiful. What are you using the power of your pussy for? Pussy power. What are you using it for? All right. So, let's talk about Naked Athena. And I'll go back and read your comments after I talk about Naked Athena. So, I've, this is the, the group. The goddess mastermind is predominantly black right we know this you know this it's predominantly black you come in the group you see you look around okay wow black women great predominantly black group and i specifically posted this video in the group because a i wanted you to see you know what was taking place in portland and what was taking place at this black lives matter protest but also because you know this is this is something very very new um, we've been watching the protests. We've been seeing people protesting. We know that Black Lives Matter is a full-fledged, growing movement, you know, breathe, growing, breathing movement. So we know that there's a lot um, going on with Black Lives Matter. For those of you who are international and, and living under a rock and don't know much about Black Lives Matter, you know, the Black Lives Matter protest is really to center the importance of Black people's lives, um, which have been minimized through government through police right through the cops um you know the 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 idea is the police don't have the right to assassinate black people which they have over and over again right so black lives matter was created to bring attention to that and to say this is some bullshit black people's lives matter stop killing people and there's no repercussion you know, there's the killing, and then there's no repercussion. There's the killing, okay, these people were killed. Then the officer has not been tried. The officer has not been locked up, fired. You know, um, nothing is nothing, right? So Black Lives Matter 
great amazing i support the protest everybody knows that i donate money to the bail companies that bail people out who have been protesting like it's it's not a game like i'm i'm happy to support i'm already a political activist i'm already who i am so i'm going to support that movement um at this black lives matter protest let's talk about a few components and i wish i could show you and we could do like a side by side or something like that but but we can't do that so at the black lives matter protest um we see this, this, this outroar, this uproar, this these crowds of men, you know, destroying and you know tearing things up, and you know they've they've taken over the federal courthouse. They have defaced statues. They have sprayed graffiti all around the sides of the statues. They are they are menning. You know, men destroy. Men can build, but they also are really great at destroying. Right? We, you know that. You know a man. <laughs> Okay, okay, all right. But yeah, so we see these men menning, right? And then at a certain point, we see the army armying. We see troops, we see the police, we see the military, we see all these, these fragmented pieces of law enforcement coming out to do whatever, spray, you know, and, and, and quell and, and lock people up or whatever. And then at a certain point of the video, we see this woman naked from the neck down naked bare booty ass naked walk through the crowd and just stand in front of the police right just stand in front of the police and as she stood in front of the police she she pointed at them you know she sat down we saw them fire some kind of tear gas you know at her in the initial but after a certain amount of time in this face off you know, she sits down and she sits on the ground, bare assed, open legged, open handed, right? And after some time, the police leave. They they leave. Everybody gets in the squad cars and they go home. Right? And we're talking about pussy and politics today. We're talking about the power of the pussy today and I want you to understand the significance of her actions in 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 two ways in two primary ways okay the first way is her just using um, you know she's she's white she's white so we we're not gonna unsee the whiteness right and this is a Black Lives Matter protest. We can talk about that, but this is a Black Lives Matter protest. And there was commentary, I posted it in this group, because there was commentary about she, you know, she shouldn't be allowed to do this because it wouldn't be the same way if it was a black woman. If a black woman did that, then it would be different. Let's go with that, right? Let's go with, let's, 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 let's talk about the criticisms. Let's talk about her being a white woman and 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 her doing this we would be stupid to pretend as if there that if privilege doesn't exist we would be stupid to pretend that privilege doesn't exist we know privilege exists so pointing out that she has privilege thank you we we know that she has privilege thank you right I want you to think about the beginning of the Black Lives Matter protest, and I want you to think about the, um, it was posted in this group as well. It was an article about white people who were in the demonstration, who were using their bodies, who were standing in front of black people to protect the black people, who were protecting the black women and children. White people standing in front as a barrier, using what? What are they using? Their privilege. Their privilege. I have a friend of mine, Dr. Nicole Hilton, who is the what, uh, the director of diversity for Governor Cuomo. She is doing an entire series for white people who want to help, and that series is about being an accomplice, not just an ally. Being an accomplice to the movement, being an accomplice to the destruction of racism, 
being an accomplice to the destruction of privilege. If we're gonna change anything, and, and, and I want you to understand where my, where I stand. Understand where I stand. I stand in the space of how can we win this war? Okay? Cause I, I'm not trying to be funny, but your black ass standing out there again <laughs> by yourself is not gonna be the way that we win this war. We need the troops. We need everyone. We need everyone to win this war. Black lives should not be the only ones advocating for black lives. We're tired. I'm tired. Can I talk about my exhaustion? I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. So why, do, why would we complain? Why would you complain? about other people going on the front lines for the first time on behalf of Black Lives Matter. Why would you complain? What is the problem? That she wasn't locked up? Let her do, let her use her privilege. Let her use, please, white lady, thank you. you because they, the way that they, that's like saying, oh, you know, the, the black man that they locked up, you know, they didn't lock up that white man. He got privilege. You're right. So let him put his ass on the line. Let her put her pussy on the line on behalf of the war. Let her put her pussy on the line. Why are you complaining? Why are you mad? Why would you be mad? Tell me why you're mad. Why would you be mad? I'll wait again. I be trying not to talk like this because I be feeling like there's an underlayer of, of past passion that's like aggressive at the same time but I but I want you to understand so that's point one point one is yes there's privilege good job yes good job privilege great 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 now can we let our accomplices those those of the white those white people in the white community who actually are just as just as angry about the things that are taking place, just as angry as some of us, can we allow? Can we relax? Can you have a seat? Can you have a, can you have several seats and allow somebody else to walk on the front line so you don't get shot, right? Because I don't want to see you die. I don't want to see something happen to you. And honestly, I don't want to see nothing happen to nobody. I'm tired of it. I'm ti I'm ex I am exhausted. I am exhausted. But can we allow this whole fight? to be something that we do collaboratively? Can we can we sit back and say, oh, I see you're, oh, you're joining the fight. Oh, that's how you decided to show up. Okay, great, thank you. Can we give, can we, can we say thank you? You know, even one of the, one of our members, who's a white woman, and thank you for commenting. I know she's not, she's not in here, but she said, you know, Jamila, I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? And why did she say I don't like it? She said, I feel like that white woman used this opportunity to make this about her, right? To make this, you know, a, 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 a her thing. And of course, I'm acknowledging that, you know what? Your opinion is your opinion. I don't disagree, I don't agree. My question, I'm a strategist. My question is, what is the bottom line? What do we want to happen? What do we wanna see? How do we win the war? How do we win? And let me tell you how we don't win. Let me tell you how you don't win as a woman. You don't win, win as a woman by criticizing another woman. That's never been the criteria for your win. Let me tell you how you're not going to win. How you're not going to win is by sitting up here talking about, well, look at what Stacey did and look at what Tamika did. You falling right back into that same shit that they brainwashed you with in the first place. You're, thank you. You're, now you're adding, you're adding to them. <laughs> You're adding to the patriarchy. Now you're adding to all the shit that you were brainwashed to believe about women in the first place. Instead of just saying, do you, sis, live your life. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting the movement. Thank you. Goodbye now. Are you, what, what is your role? What are you doing? What are you, what are you here for? What are you here for? What is your responsibility? What have you committed yourself to? What are you committed to? What are you committed to? Are you committed to perpetuating the problem? Are you committed to seeing more of the bullshit? Are you committed to criticizing people who, who are actually on the front lines? What are you committed to? This is, we're at.
What are you committed to? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I just be I'm just becoming on asking the questions. That's it. I don't, you know, I don't know a whole lot. I just know that I be asking the questions. That's all. That's what I be here to do. So that's the first part I wanted to point out, that this woman is coming out on the front lines, and she's do, she's essentially doing something and using her body in a way that this is a, this is a, this is a sub part. This is a sub note. This is a footnote, but not really a footnote. We just going to go off into it. And I'm, I was trying to take it easy on y'all. I really was. I was really trying to be easy. But can we talk about how this shit got started in the first place? Y'all know I got a degree in history and politics, okay? So let's talk about how this shit started in the first place and why her actions were so necessary. Because I want you to fully understand this. Before you open your mouth and say anything about this lady and talk, oh, she, oh, oh my God. And when you hear people do that, I want you to know where it's coming from and I want you to know how to, we're going we're gonna to take it back. In America, in America, at the beginning of um, the emancipation, when black people were free, you know, black people were brought over here, kidnapped, kidnapped and brought from home, kidnapped from home and brought over to America and enslaved and um, imprisoned, raped, abused, demoralized, brainwashed, all that stuff, right? And um, when black people were emancipated, when African Americans were emancipated, from um from slavery what happened was the kkk oh my bad the police decided that they would continue to make a concerted effort to belittle to dehumanize and to annihilate the black man okay and when that strategy when that master plan was put in place the most important part of bringing that plan into fruition was the white woman. Okay? So, again, let me just put a pause back up again. The KKK, aka the police, say we want to kill off the black man. We want to demoralize, we want we want we 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 want him gone. He is a threat. We we don't we don't we don't want that. Okay? And they said, "Well, how are we going to make this happen?" Okay, what, what are we going to do to make this happen? And the campaign was put in place to kill the black man, to, to, to ab abolish him using the white woman. What am I speaking of? What am I speaking of? I'm speaking of birth of a nation. Speaking of birth of a nation, if you don't know it, look it up. I'm speaking of the thousands, thousands of black men who were lynched, killed, castrated for looking at white women. The white woman became, she was put on a pedestal by, by American society. She was put on a pedestal. They said, we're going to put the white woman on the pedestal. And in order for us to kill the black man, we're going to use her. She's, she's going to have to scream rape, you know, threat, I'm under attack. She's going to scream, and then we're going to come in and be like, what's going on? And then they're going to be like, I don't know, and we're going to be like, get the black man and kill him. If you're confused about this, if there's anything that I'm saying that's confusing for you, you can look it up on Google. Right? The birth of a nation. Hell, let's start with Emmett Till. Emmett Till. I'm not going to go into Emmett Till's story. I'm just going to mention that this was a 12-year-old who had come to visit his family in the South. I don't want to start talking about Emmett Till, y'all. I'm going to cry. But this is a 12-year-old boy who came from Chicago to visit his family in the South. Okay, his father had already passed away. His father was a veteran and had passed away, and his mom was a single mom, and she sent him to the summer with his family and while he was here in the south he went out to the city with his grandfather with his cousins and while in the city in the town buying groceries at the grocery store whatever they were doing a accusation was made that this 12 year old whistled at a white woman 
That's the accusation that was made. And later on that night, a group of white men came to the cabin where he was staying with his grandfather and kidnapped him, took him wherever they took him, and he was never seen alive again. This was a 12 year old. This was a 12 year old. This is a 12 year old who was killed because of this so called story. A story perpetuated by a white woman. A white woman who later on admitted that this story wasn't true. He was 14 years old. And this was in 1955, Emmett Till. Emmett Till represents the heart, the reason, the foundation, the reason why white women need to be on the front lines. Because white women have been the ones to aid and abet, aid and abet the police, the system, the patriarchy, especially in this country, in the destruction of black men. White women. White women. They were, they were the, the excuse that these white men used to kill. We're, not, we're, we're talking about a 14-year-old Emmett Till. This, this, was a, this was a baby. I want you to think about the 14-year-olds that you know. And they didn't just kill him, people. They didn't just kill him. His mom, his mother, Mammy Till, she's an activist. And she made them hold an open casket funeral for Emmett Till so everyone could see what was done to that child. This was a child. This was a fucking child. This is a child. I want you to think about you at 14. Think about somebody you know who's a, a teenager, who's 15 years old being drug out in the middle of the night and killed for, for whistling at a white woman? What an offense. But that's what they used. And he wasn't the only one. You know, have you watched Rosewood? Have you watched these movies that talk about how white women were used as the foundation for much of what we've seen black men go through in this country? It's her time. Don't be mad. Don't be mad when you see. Do not. Don't take personal offense to it. Don't make it per Oh, she don't need to be out here. She does. Her ancestors aided and abetted what we're experiencing. She does need to be out here on the front lines, actively working against it in any way, shape, or fashion possible. She does. She does. She do we've done we've done a lot. We've done a lot. We have. I as a black woman, I have done a lot. Up until but not limited to taking my own kids to protest. Okay? I'm that mama. Come on, y'all, we're gonna go protest. Now I send the money to bail people out. But we've done a lot. And we shouldn't be the only ones screaming and crying. We should not be. You know, many of the women who I have worked with in the past 10 years, over 10 years, are not only women who are furious about what's taking place, white women who are, who are furious about what's taking place, but also there's a lot of white women who are having black children. Can, can we talk about that? <laughs> that means that they're personally invested in this. Some of them have black nephews, black sons, black daughters. Black God children. Some of, I mean, some of this, we're all, we're intermingling. I mean, our, pres, our former president, Barack Obama, his mother was a white woman. Are you saying that it's not Anna's place? It wouldn't be Anna's place to be out there on the front lines doing whatever it takes? This is about winning the war. Do you want us to win or not? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? I know what I want. 
I want to see all this patriarch. I want to see, first of all, I want to see you understand the power of your pussy. Let's start there. I want to see you really take in the principles of the divine feminine, use them in your life, heal your lineage, lift the vibration of the planet, lift the vibration of your community, lift that vibe, lift your own damn vibration. I want to see you win. I want to see you win. But you're not going to win just showing up on a live on a Friday. You got to come to the goddess conference. Stop playing. You come into the live and expecting to get all the things that you need from this live is like you going to the mall and trying to get samples, eat, eat a sample of chicken and thinking that that's going to fill you up. It's not going to fill you up, boo. You need to go ahead and buy your tickets to come to the Goddess Conference. Amira, please post the link for them to come to the Goddess Conference because there's so much more. Don't short yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Do not cheat yourself. Do not cheat yourself. Come to the conference. The people who came to the conference last year, when you look at them this year, their lives expand leaps and bounds because now they have the tools, the resources, the knowledge, the information, the access. If you don't know how to use the divine feminine to your benefit or to heal your lineage, it's time. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here right now with me. You're here with me right now. You wouldn't be here. So your responsibility what is your responsibility? What is your responsibility? Okay? I asked you earlier, what is it that what is it that you're using the power of the divine pussy for? Okay? And what uh, Monet said helping women. Okay. Jasmine said using the power of the pussy to help other women connect Paul gave me the ability to connect with myself in a way that I never had before, and I love sharing that with other women. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um. What are you What are you using the power of your pussy for? Once you learn how to use the power of the pussy, once you learn how to embody the divine feminine, what are you using it for? What are you using it for? What do you want to do with that power? Because it's a lot of power. You know, one of the reasons why we, we, we don't access it is because it can be very intimidating. If you're going to be honest with yourself, you can admit that it was intimidating the first time around when you started dressing up, when you started getting attention from men, when you started to really come out of your shell, when you started to really bloom and flourish, that can be intimidating. It shouldn't be intimidating. It shouldn't. But we've been brainwashed. Our energy has been brainwashed. We've been brainwashed to be afraid. We've been brainwashed to be scared of, of what, what it is that we hold. It's so, it's, so, it's so grand, it's so mighty, it's so, it's so big. We've been afraid to, to just be in that. Okay? So the reality is that now you're being called upon. What are you being called to do? To recognize your responsibility. Recognize your responsibility. What is it that I what is it that I personally am responsible for? That's what you're going to be asking yourself. What am I responsible for? Who who am I responsible for? What 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 am I supposed to be doing right now? We're at war in America, but wherever you are, what is it that you're supposed to be doing right now? So seeing and recognizing and being in that space of your responsibility and then tapping in further. Tapping in further and saying, "How do I use my natural tools how do i use my natural tools how do i use the power of my pussy because they already put your pussy you know on on, on the political uh, news they, it's already on the news media it's already there it's the pussy is there <laughs> it's there okay so since it's already there how do i use it since i already have it how do i use it how do i use it it's like being in a war and having a gun and, and, and not knowing how to use your own gun. You can't use the tools that men gave you. You know, you can't use what they give you. You can't use what they taught you. You can't use that bullshit. Because that's, that's not your shit. Remember I asked you to think about yourself at the beginning. Who were you at the beginning? Not the beginning of your life, but the beginning of your iteration. The beginning of your ascension to earth or arrival to earth who were you and what were you using when you were in your your most indigenous form 
when you were in your most indigenous form, who were you and what tools did you use? I know you're like Jamila, I don't I don't know. I don't know what tools I used. <laughs> it's okay if you're confused. If it's okay if you can't tap into that. But I teach you how to tap into that. And I'll be teaching that at the Goddess Conference. And again, I'll say it for the third time today. The way that you tap into that, into the tools, right here and right here. So scary. Our own pussy. Ah, we're scared. Run for your life. She has a pussy. Why are we so afraid? Why? And that's so honest. It's okay if you're still afraid. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to have fear. It's okay to be like, girl, I don't even know what's in there. And I don't even know if I want to know what's in there. Because I don't know. It could be, you know, it could be good. It could. Hey, I get it. I want you to know that I get it. And just being in a space of transparency. Many of you know, I've talked about it before and I'll mention it again. My first sexual experience was traumatic. It was a trauma. And when that trauma happened, my whole body shut down. My mind shut down, my, my emotions shut down, everything shut down and said, I'm not safe. I'm not safe. That's what, that's what the message was when I was traumatized in my first sexual experience and when that happened you know it took it first of all when you feel something you know a lot of you think that oh that happened years ago I'm living my life now that doesn't matter anymore baby when you feel something those emotions that's energy and when the, when you when you even when you think you're not feeling it where is that energy the energy still there you ain't addressed it. You ain't did nothing with it. That energy is still there. Don't think because, oh, it, oh, that happened 10 years ago. We not doing that no more. <laughs> okay. It's still there. It's Every time somebody hurt you and you just dealt with it, every single time something happened to you and you just dealt with it, you tried to ignore it. I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to move on. Anytime that stuff happened to you and you tried to move on, it's going to just die. You didn't move on. You just stored it within your physical body. You stored it within your experience. And it's going to come up when it's supposed to come up. And it could keep coming up for years after that. It could, keep, it could keep affecting your life for years after that. Okay? I want you to think about it like a, a, literal, a literal tree. I want you to think about it like a tree. Okay? If a tree is growing, if a tree is growing or any type of plant is growing, when it grows, which way does it grow? It grows straight up. Right? It goes it grows straight up it goes all the way up and if something comes and affects it if something comes and hits it it's gonna alter the tree it, 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 if it's a plant it's gonna bend if something hits it hurts it affects it it's gonna bend it's gonna be altered it's gonna move it's gonna the tree is gonna have a some kind of something wrapped up in it now it doesn't mean the tree can't continue to grow the tree can continue to grow yes but at the end of the day, it's been altered. It's been altered. And unless something is done to bring that tree back up, you know, once it goes to the side, unless something is done, some support is put in place to bring your tree, to bring, to bring you back up, then you're going to be altered. And then what happens in life is that you end up going through multiple alter alterations. You get hit here. Ooh, hit there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Some, some of you have been hit for years and they went back and did half the stuff that you're supposed to do. So you're right. It is scary. There's a lot. <laughs> you got a lot going on, baby. <laughs> you got a lot going on. Okay, when you're not doing your work, you know, I, I use that term, the work. I use that term a lot because it takes, it takes some work. It takes effort. It takes awareness first, but it also takes effort for you to go back and for you to recognize, okay, wait a minute, my tree look all crazy. Let me start with adjusting the tree. Let me start by putting support in place. Let me put wires around it so it can sit up right versus being tilted and going to the side. Nobody else is going to do it for you. You know that. 
you know nobody's gonna do it for you and you also know and if you're if you don't know you're learning that 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 energetic space that you're in it affects everybody everybody's affected by it everybody's affected by it I mean if you were smooth sailing before when you got knocked out of your ether now you talk different you operate with people different it's it's different you're different you're altered you are altered Say what you want to say about COVID. Oh, we're going to go back to normal. There is no normal no more. We've disrupted the system so efficiently. There is no normal anymore. What is normal? Working at home? Because it, it, that was normal to me. Working at home for six years. But it wasn't normal when I was working at home. I'm homeschooling? I've been homeschooling since, since 2008. <laughs> wasn't what is normal now? We've been altered We've been altered. You've been altered. Your emotional experiences have altered you. Now it's your job. It's your responsibility to learn how to undo half the shit that's been done. It's your job. It's your job. It's your job to take care of yourself. It's your job to look and say, well, what do I need to do for me? What do I need to do for me? What do I need to do to take care of myself? What do I need to do to to get my tree, to get my life force back where it's supposed to be. What do I need to do and what is my responsibility? What am I doing it for? When I take care of myself, when I go through the process of really, really, really taking care of myself and, and, and clearing and doing the work, because it's the work, I do it not just for myself, not so I can just come out here and be beautiful and be great and talk to y'all crazy and, 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 and get turned up. But I do it because I recognize that if I, Jamila, the goddess queen, can teach 300 women how to heal their lineage, then that means that thousands can be impacted. Yeah, that's my motive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have children. I have people relying on me. I have to do my own healing work. You got to do your own healing work because your children get affected. Your mama gets affected. You, you, everyone, everyone, when the woman heals, everybody heals. When you heal yourself, everybody starts getting, everybody pulls in that healing off of you. Okay? So, with that being said, stop pretending as if this live is, is going to be the resource and the tool, the step-by-step. -step. You need the tools. You need the step-by-step -step tool. You need step-by-step -step instruction. Step one, do this. Step two, do that. You need that. <laughs> Goddess Conference 2020. I'm going to be talking about it. I'm going to be beating the drum because you know that you need to be there. Okay? So if you um, haven't already looked at the link, Amira posted the link. Amira, just post the link. Nothing else. Just the link. And um, thank you for that. And the tickets are $97. You can buy a ticket to attend virtually. And you'll get, be granted access to all three days. It's three days of Goddess Conference. And you can also choose to do a VIP ticket. And the VIP ticket is, um, is, is also granted for three days. But with the VIP ticket, you get to come to the in-person events. So we have um, in-person time as well. And you get to come. We're only limiting... We're limiting our VIP to about 15 people. We're keeping it small, you know, because of all the Rona. So we're limiting it to 15 people. So if you want a VIP ticket, there are fewer VIP tickets, but you can go ahead and get a VIP ticket today. And when you come, you learn about all of these things that we're talking about. You learn how to embody the divine feminine. Not the feminine that men taught you. But the feminine that's been feminine since before men could even write. Because we know women were writing, we were articulating, we were creating dictionaries. We were, we were doing it all before. We were doing all that before. Okay? So, you're learning divine femininity. That's what you're here to learn. That's what this time is about. Even on the podcast, Rise of the Divine Feminine Podcast, I talk about COVID. COVID is the energy that represents the clearing, the healing process. We're moving into the age of Aquarius. I'm gonna do a separate live where I talk about the age of Aquarius. We are moving progressively into the age of Aquarius. What does that mean? The age of Aquarius is about enlightenment. Enlightenment. 
I'm not new. I've been doing this. You knew. <laughs> you knew. You knew. You you knew you waking up to a whole nother layer. You oh, here hey, wow, here we are. Yes. It's the rise of the divine feminine. It's it's the walking into Aquarius. Okay? So I'm gonna be teaching you about um all of these things, how to embody your divine feminine energy, how to harness that energy, how to use the space of that energy and get your ticket don't delay don't play around because the ticket prices are gonna go up you know it's 97 dollars now it's gonna go up to 197 dollars so don't play around get your ticket today and come and learn the tools come and learn the resources come and learn exactly what you need to do your work because it is going to require you doing work okay so i love you very much i know today's live was a lot but I, I know that that just, it's, it's valuable to understand this power of the pussy, the political nature and, you know, how it got politicized. <laughs> but it's powerful. Your pussy is powerful. And we as women, we have to embrace all of these powers. We have to use our powers to our highest benefit. Use it to benefit you. Use it to benefit your, your children, your lineage, your community the vibration of this planet use it use it so i love you very much amir is posting the tickets at at the bottom if there are any questions i'm happy to answer them just post them and i'll be glad to comment on them on the live but i thank you for joining me today i appreciate you i'm jamila the goddess queen and i'll see you next friday same time same place i don't